In this video, I will explain you why MAPI is the worst possible forecasting metric to assess the quality of your demand planning process. First, I'll show you the theory, what is MAPI, how to compute it, and then I will show you in Excel step by step why using MAPI is such a bad idea. Let's get started. Okay, let's start with some theory about MAPI. So MAPI stands for Mean Absolute Percentage Error, and basically the name is a cooking recipe on how to compute that. Um, on the left side of the screen, you can see a mathematical, mathematical formula that shows you how to compute it, but you can also see a simpler example in Excel where I do that step by step. Let's review this Excel together. So as you can see, the first step of MAPI is to compute the absolute forecast error, which is basically the forecast minus demand, and you take the absolute value of that. So you can see here an example in Excel, I take the absolute value of B3 minus A3, that would be the absolute forecast error. Now I can transform this into a percentage by dividing this value by the corresponding demand. So you see the formula, I divide this by A3 and I get the percentage. So on row four, I have a percentage of 12%, row five, 6% and so on. That would be the absolute percentage error period by period. But then I want to compute an overall number, so the overall mapping. And to do that, I will simply take the average of all these values. And then in my example, I get 16.9%. And that's how you compute MAPI. On the graph on the right side of the screen, you can see a graphical example. Demand is in blue, the forecast in orange. And in the red bars, I show you uh, uh, the MAPI expressing percentage error. So you can see, for example, that in period eight, we have the highest percentage error around 50%. And in periods, uh, for example, six, I have one of the lowest, and it must be around one or two percent. Now, what's very important to see here, and that's the main drawback of MAPI, is that MAPI reacts differently depending on how high or low demand is. So you can see on the screen, you have two arrows, the red, the red one and the green one, and basically the height of these arrows is the same. So the forecast error in absolute numbers in period eight and period 16 is exactly the same. Now, if you look at the percentage number, period eight is much worse than period 16. So what happened? Basically in period eight, demand is much lower than in period 16. So basically the percentage in period eight is much higher. So your error expressing absolute numbers, it's basically the same, but expressed as a percentage of demand, it's much higher in period eight than in period 16. You can see the same in the Excel file. You see period eight, nine in the Excel file, where 32 and 48%, it's really high. Why? mostly because demand is kind of lower for these two periods, so we get a higher percentage, okay? Now, this is one of the main drawbacks of MAPI, is that if you have the same absolute error during period with high or low demand, it's going to result in a different overall MAPI. That's a big issue, and I'll show you in a minute in Excel how we can see that step by step. Now, before we move on, something very important to understand here with MAPI is that there is not so much of a global convention within supply chain on what is MAPI and what's not MAPI. The definition I use here is the official mathematical definition of MAPI, but it could be that in your organization, in your supply chain, maybe you or your colleague are using a forecasting KPI, calling it MAPI, but using a different formula. Now, what's very important is not to align so much the naming, but more to be aligned on the formula. So I think it's always better to discuss forecasting formulas rather than just the name. So be sure that when you talk with a colleague, if you're unsure on how they compute forecasting error, rather than just saying, are you using MAPI? It's much better to ask them, can you show me how you compute this forecast error? Now, this being said, let's just move on to Excel. Okay, so let me run you through an example so you can see how MAPI reacts to different forecasts. So, I made this exercise mostly for my training course and my teaching where you can see the demand pattern for a specific product for one of my earlier projects. Now, I would like you to put yourself in the shoe of a demand planner. So you have this demand pattern and let's imagine you have to compare three different forecasts where maybe one was made by a forecast engine, one was made by an external uh, forecasting provider and maybe the third forecast was made by a sales team. Now your job is to assess which one of these three forecasts is the best for this specific product. And in order to do that, you're gonna try out different forecasting KPI. And based on these metrics, you're gonna select, well, maybe forecast two or forecast one is the best. Now let's just take a look at this before we jump into the forecasting metrics. 
So in blue here, you see the demand pattern, and I created these three dummy simple forecasts, forecast one, two, and three. Now, what we're going to do is that we're going to compute MAPI for these three and see which one is the best. I'll do this step by step in Excel. You can see I have a column here with demand over time. This fluctuates in 2019 and 2020, and I created my three forecasts. Again, this is just a simple example with dummy forecast. Don't expect anything uh, stay up here. So we have three different forecasts with 380,000 units, 260,000 units, and 200,000 units. The first thing I'm going to do is simply to compute the forecast error for all of these. Let's just do that. Up, that's for the first one. Let's do the second one. Up, sorry for that. Let me start, start again. Again, not my day with Excel. And finally, the last one forecast minus demand. Again, here we go. Now, I already put some automated formatting here, so you can see in blue the worst error where the forecast is way too low. Here you see it's really low as well, and in red when the forecast is way too high. So here I computed the absolute bias for these three different forecasts. What we see is that forecast one only has a bias of minus 2,000, whereas forecast three is minus nearly 200,000. That's quite a lot. I can express this as a percentage. Let me do that. I'm just going to divide this value by the average demand. So that's the first one. Let me work my Excel formula. Great. Now we see that the first forecast has a bias of minus 0 to 5%, quite good. Second forecast has a bias of minus 31%. This is really bad. And the third forecast has a bias of minus 47%. This is even worse. It's really, really bad. Now I'm going to compute the absolute forecast error for all these forecasts and all these periods. Let me do that. Up, I have now the absolute forecast error. Again, I apply some automated for, uh, formatting. You can see in green, these are the lowest values. So for example, here we have a forecast that's well, really accurate. And in red, we have the worst forecast error. You see here that we are off by more than a million. Again, I can just compute the average absolute error. Let me do that. Voila, and again, I can also express this as a percentage. Let me do that. I will just divide this by the average demand. So we can transform this into a percentage. But you can see that forecast one gets the worst MAE at 68%. This one is uh, the best one, forecast two, with 65, and this one is in the middle with 67. Finally, I'm going to compute. Mappy. So I'm going to express all these errors. So these errors that the monthly error, sorry, I'm going to express them by a percentage. So I'm just going to divide this by demand. Let me set up this uh, Excel formula. Up. Now I just expressed all the for the absolute forecast error here as a percentage over there. Now, this is very interesting because, again, here you see in green the lowest percentage error and in red the worst one. First, you can clearly see that the worst and the best cases here in absolute values are not the best and the worst one in percentage. So for example, the worst percentage error, you have it for forecast one, well, in January 2020. Now, what, what's happening here is that we have a forecast of 380,000 units, but the real demand is just 7,000 units. Right. So when you compute the absolute forecast error, you have 300,072. But when you express that in percentage, it goes up to nearly 5,000%. It makes nearly no sense to me, but that's how it works. So we now have a percentage. Now, here I can just compute the average of the column, and that would give me MAPI. Let's do that. So now you see that for MAPI, forecast one gets a MAPI of 366%. Forecast 2 gets a MAPI of 248, and finally, Forecast 3, a MAPI of 194%. Now, these percentages are quite weird when you think about it. So if you have to communicate to your colleague that you have a forecast error of 200%, 300%, it sounds a bit weird. Again, 
what we see here is that MAPI is really overreacting to this specific value because it is so low. On the other side, if you look at this value here, it's very high and MAPI is quite low. You see that the, the um, percentage error is quite low. Why? Again, it's normal because this value is so high. Now, let's imagine for some reason that in January 2020, um, you had the sales of zero, maybe because you had a shortage, maybe something happened, I don't know. Let's just say it was zero, which is not uncommon for supply chain. Now, if you do that, while well, here you get an error in your formula, it, it doesn't work. Of course, we try to divide the value by zero. Excel is signed, this does not exist, so I will not report that. Now, I know that some businesses would say, well, you know what, if demand is zero, we will not uh, account for this specific value, we'll just bypass it. So we could, we could do that as well. Um, let me change the formula. I'm going to type in Excel, well, if error, let's just say it's 100%, and if not, you compute this percentage. Sorry, that didn't work. It should be the other way around, sorry for that. Voila, it will be much better now. So let's imagine now that we have zero. Hop, now I get something very different. I don't have an error anymore, I just block it at limit it at 100%. Now maybe you, you've seen something weird. I'm just gonna save these numbers here so we can compare that. I'm going to change this to zero. Now, what we see is that if I move this to zero and keep this at 100%, MAPI is very different. You see that MAPI is quite, it's in every single case, it's much better. You see that I'm going from 366 to 136. But when you think about it, before I had a demand of 7,000 and a forecast of hundreds of thousands, and now demand is zero. So basically, when demand is zero, my forecast error should be higher because I'm even more off when you think about it. The, the difference between forecast is demand is higher than when demand used to be 7,000. Well, even though the difference is now higher, I get a better MAPI. So we see that capping it at 100% is not a good idea at all. Look at this. If I just type one unit, so we just sold one unit, then I get millions and it simply makes no sense. But this formula here is saying that zero is better than one, which again makes no sense. Now, in some supply chain, this even gets worse because you have some returns, maybe data cleaning is not perfect, and you have some negative amounts from time to time. Let's imagine here that, I don't know, we got some returns, so there is some wrong transaction um, in SAP. I have minus 100. Now, well, it simply makes no sense. I don't think I have to, to discuss this. It just makes no sense. Okay, let's go back to this 7,000. Um, let's go back to this exercise here. So if I say that I use MAPI to assess which forecast is the best, I would say, well, by far, forecast three is the best possible forecast with a MAPI of 194, whereas you see forecast one is 366, 248. So for sure here, no doubt, if you find MAPI is a good KPI, you will tell me where forecast three is really the best. If you look at the graph here, Forecast three is the yellow line. You see, it's a very, very, very low forecast. I think that, and I've asked this to thousands of professionals and thousands of students over the years. Um, in average, only five to ten percent of people would tell me forecast three is the best. At maximum, yeah, around five percent of people would say forecast three is the best. Now, if you compute MAPI, MAPI is telling you forecast three for sure is the best. So there is a big discrepancy between what demand planners and students recognize as being the best forecast versus what MAPI is signed to be the best forecast. Now, what's happening is that MAPI, due to the fact that we compute percentages period by period, it simply try to push you to a very low forecast. So you don't make any forecast error during low period, which basically makes no sense for supply chain. Here, usually during my training course, we discuss other KPIs and we find out that forecast number one is the best. One of the main reasons is that it's not biased. It's an unbiased forecast. And we can see here this in the metric. You see that the first one is unbiased, whereas the third one has a bias of minus 47%. So for sure, you cannot possibly use forecast tree in a supply chain context because of this bias of minus 47%. If you were to use this forecast to take business decisions, such as 
hiring people, uh, moving inventory, producing something, or making supply orders to your supplier, you would get into massive, massive shortages. But then again, that's what Mappy is advising you. So my best advice is just drop Mappy entirely. This is not a good forecasting KPI. First, because it overreacts to low demand value. Also, because it is undefined if demand is zero, which is the case for most of your product. It also gives you wrong ideas if demand is negative, which also happens from time to time for some businesses. So all in all, I don't see any single good reason to use Mappy as a forecasting KPI. Instead, you have much better uh, possibilities, such as just tracking mean absolute error and bias together. But that would be a subject for another video.